See the turtle, ain't he keen? All things serve that god dang beam. Hey, do you believe in the afterlife? Because I think maybe this is it. Let's talk some gunslinger. The man in black fled across the desert, and the gunslinger followed. Few, if any, seem to have grasped the principle of reality. New knowledge leads always to yet more awesome mysteries. Greater physiological knowledge of the brain makes the existence of the soul less possible yet more probable by the nature of the search. But the man in black travels with your soul in his pocket. Do any men grow up or do they only come of age? Time's the thief of memory. Though the mystery of the universe is not time, but size. First comes smiles, then lies. Last is gunfire. Where the world ends is where you must begin. And they were close to the end of the beginning. There was murder, there was rape, there were unspeakable practices, and all of them were for the good, the bloody good, the bloody myth, for the grail, for the tower. Long days and pleasant nights, my content Mike back to talk a little more Side King's Dark Tower, starting with 1982's The Gunslinger, the first of seven, or if you want to count the eighth one, eight Dark Tower novels, which we'll get into eventually. But we got 1982's The Gunslinger here. This is actually what was known as a fix-up novel, which is where they took five short stories that were published in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction. You know, you know, I keep teasing about that magazine, but you know what? I found it, it's still actually in publication. So the joke's on me. They're still going, right? Uh, but King wrote this story from 78 to 81 over five different issues of that magazine. And they compiled them all together for the 1982 publication of The Gunslinger. Now, uh, if you don't know, if this is your first time finding the channel, the Into the Multiverse series is something I do where it's just Stephen King novels in publication order. And that's just once published under his own name. I'll do the Richard Bachman stuff later. I'll do the short stories and the novellas and stuff later. But right now, I'm just going to do the novels in publication order, and then I will explore their connections to all of the events in his greater multiverse. These are non-spoiler reviews, so if you're worried about that, don't be. I'm not going to spoil anything for you. If you want a little breakdown about how I got into the Dark Tower recently, I did my video about why you should read the Dark Tower. So I don't want to rehash all that here. Just real quick, know that I was 19 when I first discovered the series and read this book. And I don't think that was an accident, but I did reread it again before I did this review because I'd been a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time since 19 for me. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I remembered everything to talk about it here. So let's get into it here with the good old What Is It About? The Gunslinger introduces Roland Deschain, the last in the line of gunslingers in a Western dystopian world that may or may not be the future of our own present timeline. The story follows Roland's pursuits of the sinister Man in Black as he chases him across the Mohine Desert and into the Cyclopean Mountains. Joining him on this chase is a young boy named Jake, who seems to be from another world. Along the way, we get history of how Roland came to be a gunslinger and hints about how he came to be in pursuit of the Man in Black and on his long quest to find the mythical Dark Tower. Yes, it's vague. Yes, it is not a spoiler. That's because I want you to read the story, but... Here's the thing, that just scratches the very, very surface of this amazing world that Stephen King has crafted. And I think that's because this book only scratches the surface of where this journey is going to go. It really is just a prologue to the Dark Tower. But that brings us to what makes it good or bad. Now here, I don't want to repeat myself a lot from a why you should read video. There are gonna be a couple of things, but I do wanna say, I think the first thing is that King mashes up several genres here. I mean, there's fantasy, there's Western, there's horror, there's sorcery, there's science fiction, you name it, he found a way to wrap it in here. I saw a little uh, diagram recently. It was uh, three corners of the triangle and it was like horror, fantasy, and science fiction and all the elements that make up those and which way they kind of, kind of like a loose Venn diagram. 
And I looked at it and I said, wow, Stephen King must have seen this chart and said, how do I get all of those into one story? And the Dark Tower was born. Uh, so if I, if I can dig up that photo, I'll put, I'll superimpose it over here so you can see what I was talking about. But uh, since we're dealing with wizards and prophecies and lineage and things like that and castles and estates and lords and ladies, that all that, all that business, I like to consider this one under the fantasy umbrella. You know, instead of maybe instead of swords and shields, you got, you know, boots and, and, and handguns. So I, I, I don't ever think that fantasy has to just be swords and shields and dragons and things like that. You got wizards, you got demons, you got all that kind of stuff. You got basically knights of the round table. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this one on fantasy. And if you go to a bookstore right now and you say, hey, where can I find the Dark Tower? They're going to point you to the fantasy section. Even King talks about this being very much his ode to Tolkien, which I'll get into a little bit later. But what makes this book good for me is the mystery. Trying to discover what exactly happened to this world is always just a real head scratcher because it seems almost like it's our world, but almost like it seems like it's dystopian future, but like in the past or something in like a Western frontier setting. And all the time you're hearing people talk about uh, the world has moved on. And for example, like with time, no one talks about time. They're like, when, when did this happen? Like, I don't know, you know, because no one pays attention to time anymore. They talk about the sun rising and setting in different places, never in the same place. And it could have been three days. It could have been 10. Who knows? No one pays attention to time. That is always something that really, really just grabbed me when I first started trying to figure out what exactly happened here. Uh, but I mean, there's other things, you know, why is Roland after this man in black? You know, what does he know? What did he do? Is is he necessarily a bad guy? Uh, is is Roland a good guy? You know, I don't feel like, I feel like the lines are really blurred on those. And then what is the Dark Tower and why is Roland so obsessed with finding and entering this place? You get all these questions set up. And like I said, you get the mashup of several themes here. I feel like you got a lot of uh, the Man With No Name trilogy by Sergio Leone, that's uh, Clint Eastwood. And you got your Tolkien, obviously, you're gonna have your Tolkien influence here. And then you got some Arthurian legend, because I really believe that gunslingers are basically knights, you know, with, with guns instead of swords. I, I really feel like that is where they are going with this. But uh, it's the story of one man's quest for something that is important to him. You know, uh, this is there is no like fellowship here. This is this is Roland's quest. This is this is about what he wants, and it's about the lines that he will cross to get there. You know, he will do some horrific things, some unimaginable stuff to get there. And uh, I'm always going to consider that under a good thing because, uh, like I said, this is one of the first uh, I guess you'd say anti-hero kind of stories that I read, or maybe Grim Dark. I, I don't know that Grim Dark was a thing in the '80s. I don't know. I didn't read like uh, The Black Company or something like that, or Stephen Donaldson. Uh, I, I don't know how Grim Darky those got. And I don't really think that this really falls under that. It's just it's got it's Stephen King. It's got some messed up stuff, and I think you expect that because it's Stephen King. But uh, it's got some really really dark stuff, which I always I'm going to consider a good thing. But, you know, if you have only been a traditional fantasy reader, you might file that under bad because you might not be ready for it. Because, I mean, you got everything from, like, uh, aborting demon babies to uh, kids getting shot in the head. I mean, it's it's dark, dark stuff. It really, it really, really is. So I say be careful there. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that, that that all falls under good for me. But some have considered this bad because they think, they read this book and they don't get anything out of it because you don't get a lot of answers in this book. This really is the prologue for The Dark Tower. This is setting the table. And if you're part of that instant gratification era who's got to have all their answers right now, you're probably going to leave this book disappointed. And that's why I always recommend that you read the first two books, The Gunslinger and The Drawing of the Three. Then you'll get a greater sense of this world that Stephen King created because uh, book two nothing like book one. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, so I, I think after book two, you'll get a greater idea of what you're in for on this quest because, um, yeah, it's a hell of a setup for this book and it is a very, very long and arduous journey, but it is worth it. And this really is just the beginning. So I don't consider that a bad thing at all, but I know that many people have said, oh, I think you could probably skip it and be fine. I think if you skip this book, you would be absolutely lost. That's like not only skipping concerning hobbits, but skipping to channel to, to, to chapter four 
uh, of Fellowship of the Ring, I think. You would have no idea what is going on. And skipping The Hobbit altogether. <laughs> you know, that's how I feel if you skip this book, keeping the Tolkien parallel there. Uh, I think that you need this because you need to know Jake. You need to know uh, Roland. You need to know the man in black. You need to know what's going on with them. Or else when they just pop back up later, you're just going to be like, what? What's going on? There we are. I think it's every bit as important as any first chapter of a book is. And that's what this is. This is the first chapter of the story. Let me get into why you should read it here. And that's going to be the first question that I'm going to get is, what is the difference between this revi 2003 revised and expanded edition to the original version? I'm going to reference you to my guy Jaime and Fuego's channel because I think that he is basically the scholar of Stephen King. He's the guy I go to when I can't remember something, for sure. Uh, I think he is going to have a better explanation of the differences between these two books. I was 19 when I read this, guys. I just turned 42, okay? I don't remember the differences between these. I think the only one that I can point out is that there is mentions of Legion in this and there was not in the original. I have, I think maybe the Crimson King's name might come up in this one and didn't come up in the original one. That's all I know off of memory. So I don't know about the real differences there. But uh, again, check out Hawaii, uh, Jaime's channel there because I think he will be able to tell you the differences. And um, I think that this book, the number one reason why you should read, and you're gonna think this is funny, is it has arguably the greatest opening line in the history of fantasy novels. I know some of you are going to say uh, the, wheel of, the wheel of time turns and ages come to pass. And that's very, very good and all. But to me, the most gangster line to begin any fantasy novel ever is the man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. How are you not going to keep reading with a line like that? To me, that was like, oh, I was in from that first line. And I don't know what it is. I mean, I've seen that on t-shirt. I'd love to have that on this t-shirt. I don't have enough Stephen King t-shirts. Give me more. But I, I love that line. But uh, the journey to the Dark Tower is a long and taxing one. I'm not going to lie to you here. You don't get your answers up front, especially not in The Gunslinger. You get a little backstory on Roland, how he became a gunslinger. You get some flashbacks to his early teenage years and his interactions with other characters that are in this book. But you're set up with more questions than you are answers. And... This isn't like Lost or something, guys, where you're getting all your questions and they have no idea where you're going. Doing this on a reread, I can see now King knew where he was going from the very beginning. Because usually with me in fantasy novels, when there's a bunch of prophecies and stuff like that, I'm like, if it's important, it'll come up again. I, that, again, I'll make the Wheel of Time kind of cross-reference here. There were so many prophecies in that book, I had to just be like, all right, if they're important, they'll come up again. Because if I start writing these all down, I'm going to be writing books as long as Wheel of Time books. Because there were a lot of them. So when I see prophecies, usually I'd be like, yeah, they come back, I'll look for them. I don't write every one of these down. I think the last thing I did that for was Song of Ice and Fire, but I don't want to talk about that right now. But all of the stuff in this book, in that last conversation, all matters. And we're talking all the way through like book seven. It's all here right at the beginning and i was absolutely blown away by that so yes it is one of those things where uh i've said that i've gotten kind of uh, annoyed uh when i was reviewing wheel of time videos and everyone kept saying oh on a reread you're gonna get this 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 and this and i was like i'm never gonna reread that series because it's monumentally large and i'm not i'm not young enough to be able to fit everything I want to read in uh to 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 be able to read you know those 14 tomes ever again uh this this was short. I said, yeah, sure. I'll reread that because I'd like to be able to talk about it with some other than just like, I think I remember this. I was actually surprised I remembered as much as I did, really. Uh, but to all, to me, all this means is that you don't get your answers up front. You get a little backstory on Roland. You don't find out exactly why he is the enigma that he is. But to me, that means there's a great hook and that you're going to want to read more to understand this world and this man's quest. So again, these are good things for me. Again, if you have not read King because you've said, I don't like horror. I think that's a big misconception about King is that he only writes horror. Yes, I know, even I refer to him as the master of horror and he earned that name, but the man writes drama, he writes thrillers, he writes freaking romance stories, okay? It, he's not just a one trick pony. And this is fantasy, but it's got all that. It's got romance, it's got adventure, it's got thriller, it's got horror, it's got science fiction, it's got everything in it. And I think you're going to find a little bit of something that you love there. And if fantasy is your jam and you haven't gotten to Stephen King, 
this is a great entry point for you. And I know that sounds like I'm playing both sides here because in my Why You Should Read, I said I do not recommend that you start with the Dark Tower. You can start here, okay? I just think that there are more things that you will get if you read The Stand and Salem's Lot first because there's two characters in those two books that are monumentally important in the Dark Tower series. Uh, again, I think you can read that. Uh, the Dark Tower first, and then if you go back and read those, you're like, oh, okay, I get it now. It's it's one of those things that kind of works both ways. A lot of people point that out in that Why You Should Read video, and, and they're not wrong. They're not wrong. I'm just telling you the way that I would recommend doing it is reading at least those first two books and then starting The Dark Tower, but you don't have to. You don't have to. You just want to go straight to the fan. And I know asking you to read The Stand is quite a commitment. I mean, that's what, like a 1,200-page in hardcover? I understand that that's asking quite a bit of someone, so I get if you don't want to do that. Although, you should read The Stand because it's a amazing anyhow uh yeah you i'd always recommend against starting with the dark tower but you can start here and be okay but in the end guys look this is just the beginning of a great quest that barely scratches the surface of this humongous world that stevie king created here there's a reason this is referred to as his magnum opus and this doesn't even get into it at all but you need to read it I keep saying that the quest for the Dark Tower is a long one. It really, really is. But it is very much a journey worth taking. And you need to start with the Gunslinger. I've never heard any series say, yeah, you should skip the first book. That's absolute lunacy. Do not skip this book. Definitely read this one and Drawing the Three back to back if you have that option. I would really recommend that you do that. All right, let's get into a little bit of spoiler talk here. Um, if you haven't read Dark Tower 2 through 7, you're fine. I'm not going to spoil those books for you here. Honestly, a lot of that is actually pretty hazy, but I'm not going to I'm not going to spoil books 2 through 7 for you, so don't worry about that. Not even in connections. I won't talk about books 2 through 7 in case you've only read The Gunslinger and you're following along here. But some spoiler thoughts for just this book. Roland basically massacring the town of Tull, and I'm talking women and children and no matter what you are, that was the I'm unable to stop moment for me. Like I said, at that age, I had not read a lot of Grimdark. Uh, I think that it's hard to not classify this Grimdark when you got Roland freaking shooting kids, talking about shooting a kid right in the head and like just exploding his face. Uh, I, I, at the time, I had read Stephen King up to everything that I had read by him. At, at, up to that point, 1997, I read everything that he had written, but uh, except the Talisman and, 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 and Eyes of the Dragon, which I'll get into. I was out of fantasy completely when this book came out. So I didn't read those two books because I was out of fantasy. King was what brought me back to fantasy. Yes. All right. So I had read everything. So when I, I got to this, I, I, I was used to his style, but I wasn't used to it in a fantastical setting. So that's why it was just kind of something new to me. But him being able to just absolutely massacre this whole time. It was the most visceral, just insane chapter I had ever read in a book up to that point in my life and I could not believe what I was reading and it's still one of those things even in the reread I was just like glued to the page I could not look away so good so good and I know it sounds really really sick <laughs> to say so good about massacring a whole town but it's really crazy popping heads and stuff like the whole shootout tool it was just it was it was interesting and I, and I said I felt like in 1982 King was the only writer that had the testicular fortitude to do something like that, you know. So that's why I think it kind of stuck with me so much. Uh, another big scene was the Man in Black's encounter with Allie and the whole setting up the number 19, which is super important within the entire King multiverse. I could make a whole video talking about the number 19 and get to the end of it and be like, well, what does it mean, Mike? And I'd be like, I don't uh, again, uh, 19 is something that is very important within his universe. I don't know if we've ever gotten a definitive answer, though. Or it's one of those things I think if you get the definitive answer, you know, you, you might be disappointed. So I don't know if we ever want that answer. But uh, the 19 thing, and this was just a huge mind trip. This is the first thing I really ever noticed, the whole number 19 thing in his, his books up to this point. And the whole idea that you can get the knowledge of what happens to us after we die all you have to do is say the number 19. However, the knowledge of it will drive you insane. You know, would you be able to resist this temptation, you know, knowing this? I mean, I think it's Roland who says, you know, start thinking that 20 comes after 18, you know. Uh, but, I mean, could you resist that? I, I don't know that we could. And the fact that she doesn't, you know, and that's when, uh, you know, she tells 
Roland to, to, to shoot her in that, 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 that whole deal until because, you know, she did say the number 19 and got the got the answers. It's just a really, really crazy scene. And the letter that the man in black gives her is just like super he even like puts a smiley face on the end. God, he's crazy. Uh, but another one is Go Then, There Are Other Worlds Than These, that quote by Jake Chambers. Uh, it, it seems that Jake has come from a parallel universe, right? And it's a, a, a parallel universe that is very much in the reader's timeline. In 1982, that like, it seems like it's 1982 Earth Prime, if you will, of New York. And just Jake's whole death scene there. And then he has a second death scene in Roland's world. And the whole go then there are other worlds and these. I mean, that just pretty much confirms, okay, we're dealing with parallel dimensions here and string theory and infinite universes and stuff. And that's something that just completely blew my mind when I was that age. And it's something I very, very much like. I mean, I took two years of astrophysics in, in college. And I mean, it was mostly because of my interest in, in, in King when he did The Mist. And he talked about the the beasts coming from you know parallel universes. Uh, I love stuff like that, or, or parallel dimensions rather. I love stuff like that, and it started with with King for me. So uh, yeah, that's really really stuff that just warped my mind. Uh, but you know, again, letting Jake die, you know, as to not lose his opportunity to catch the man in black and get his answers that he was looking for. It's just one of those things where it's like, wow, Roland really will do whatever it takes to you know, make his quest. And it's it's heartbreaking, you know, because Roland even thinks to himself several times, you know, that, he, that he's in love with this kid. He loves this kid to death. And to just walk over him like that and let him fall to not lose the pursuit of the Man in Black was just dark stuff. Just dark stuff. Uh, one of the biggest moments for me was the Palaver. You say Palaver? Is it Palaver? I say Palaver, uh, which is just a conversation in his universe. I don't know if I was expecting like some kind of like bullets versus like a wizard staff shootout or something between these two. I don't know. I would read so much fantasy where that's what it was. You're gonna have the big showdown with the wizard at the end, and the fact that they just talk, and it works. <laughs> you know, yes, you have more more questions and answers again, but it's a confrontation between these two. You just feel the tension. And it almost feels like uh, just just two enemies with mutual respect who you know smoke the peace pipe to decide if they're going to kill each other or not. It really, really is a deep and meaningful scene. And some of the stuff that they talk about in there is just super, super deep. And yet, like I said, you have more questions at the end. I mean, is the man in black actually dead? How much time has gone by? What did all these riddles that he said mean? Was it just gibberish? What the hell is the drawing? You know, uh, all these things. Uh, but on a reread, like I said, you get so much foreshadowing in this book that I did not recall. Uh, so, I think that's why drawing the three blew me away the first time I read it because I was like, what in the world? This is nothing like the last book. And that's a good thing. Let's move on to some connections here. I've said that before that the Dark Tower is the connective tissue. So this will be a little lighter like I said, because I don't want to talk about the connections in books two through seven. So if you're looking for those, that's why they're not here. Uh, the big one here, obviously, is The Stand, Randall Flagg, Man in Black. He is the main antagonist in The Stand, and it's very cool to see King's most iconic villain cross over here and be in the, basically the main antagonist of his magnum opus. Really, really cool stuff. Um, Black House, uh, Black House, Jake Chambers is mentioned and also Legion is referenced by the Man in Black. Again, I think Legion is only something that was added to the 2003 edition, so that might not have meant as much to you if you never read that one. Eyes of the Dragon takes place in Delane, which is referenced in Gunslinger. The Man in Black, under his real name, uh, Randall Flagg, is featured in Eyes of the Dragon, which I'll be reading for the first time this November and Talisman in December, so I can cross those off. Those will be first-time reads, so that's going to be really exciting into the multiverse stuff. Hearts in Atlantis features the Crimson King. Uh, I think, again, he wasn't referenced by name in the original version, but he is referenced by name in this version. And I believe Ted in Hearts in Atlantis actually uses the term gunslinger. So he's actually knowledgeable about what those are. And then also in Insomnia also references the, uh, or features rather, the Crimson King. In it, the creatures in Beverly's Drain actually reply that they themselves are Legion. Uh, Zoltan the Bird also uses the same rhyme 
that Henry Bowers does, the beans, beans, magical fruit. Now, I know that's a very, very common thing or whatever, so that might be a stretch, but I'm counting it. And uh, The Outsider, that's the most recent one. Yes, The Outsider had references to there are other worlds than these, and I appreciated that little nod there. So the connections for the Dark Tower will grow immensely as we continue to walk down the path of the beam. But that's all I got this time, guys. Have you read The Gunslinger? What did you think? Have you reread it if this if you've read the whole series before? Because I think you'll find a lot of stuff that you'll enjoy the second time around that you might not have the first time. So drop in the comments, guys. Let me know what you say, and I say thank you.